Hey guys, thanks for watching. I've got a slightly different video for you today. Uh, the other week I had the privilege of filming and directing a music video for worship leader Dave Bell. And once we'd finished doing the recording, he and I just took a minute to do a quick interview and just talk about the song and the video and why we'd done it. So I wanted to share that with you. So I'm going to jump over in a second to that interview. Um, and then stay with me because when we come back, I'm going to give you a few tips on what you can do if you want to record a worship video in your church or any other church building. So stay tuned for that. Here's the interview. Hello and welcome to another video. And as you might be able to tell, I am not in my studio today. I am with my good friend, Mr. Dave Bell. Uh, he is a worship leader, singer, songwriter. How do you describe yourself? What, what? I, I think you've, you've done it. Okay, great. Let's go with that. Singer, songwriter, that worship leader. That was very leader. kind, so let's, let's stay at that. Cool, yeah. okay. Um, and we are here today in a particular building. We'll tell you about it in a minute. Um, and we've been filming a video for Dave's latest song. Yeah. So Dave, do you want to just kick us off? Tell us about the song. So thanks so much, Ben. I, I wrote this song in The Waiting a number of years ago. Uh, had the honor of writing it with a great friend called Chris Eaton and he's written loads of amazing songs you yeah. know number ones we sing one every Christmas Saviour's Day by Sir Cliff Richard himself yeah. um, and a, a, just an incredible friend and an honor to write with him and I suppose this song in the waiting we've done an acoustic version of it already so this is a re-release of a brand new version and uh, I very reluctantly do those type of things but this song was so special to me and also I noticed it really had an impact on a lot of people. So I wanted to explore that and, and do a brand new version. Yeah. And uh, I suppose the reason why is it's because it's very raw and very honest. And I think it's a subject that we don't often write about. It's that, that mystery and that unknown of, uh, of being in the waiting. And so um, the song really is for everybody. And how I liken it is, you know, when we visit uh, our capital city London and we go on the famous London Underground we hear that uh, quintessential English voice come over the tannoy that says train approaching and then the next line mind the gap and so I got thinking about this word mind the gap and that's exactly what we're doing basically when Jesus Christ walked on this earth 2,000 years ago the gap was closed but then when he ascends to be with the Father, the gap then became open. And we're currently living between two kingdoms, the kingdom of earth, and the kingdom of heaven. And our job at the moment is to mind the gap. But when you're minding the gap, that also means you're in the waiting. It yeah. means you're in the constant tension and balance between mystery and possible unanswered questions, but also miracles and knowing that Jesus is alive and reading the Bible. And so I wanted this song to be for everybody who feels like they're in the waiting, you know, in the waiting for um, maybe a loved one to come back to church, maybe in the waiting for to find your perfect husband or wife, maybe in the waiting for a diagnosis, in the waiting for healing to manifest itself in the here and now, waiting for a financial breakthrough, waiting for a relational breakthrough, Maybe you've had words spoken over your life at a young age and you're in the waiting for them to yeah. come to pass. So using that analogy of, you know, we're here to mind the gap. I want people to know that I personally believe with my faith that Jesus is here and he's with you in yeah. your waiting. Yeah, amazing. Cool, it's, a, it's a, such a fantastic song. We've had a great time filming this yeah. video today. Yeah. Um, so why are we here? Why am I not in my studio right now? Yeah. Why are we standing in this building? Well, we couldn't afford your studio. <laughs> um, so we had to come uh, somewhere else. And it's really difficult to thematically tie songs into lots of things. And yeah. literally this song is a full band production, but it's just me here singing today. And I thought what would be incredibly special is if we could use this place. And so this is, a very old church, but it has significant meaning and yeah. significant history. And uh, I live in Lincoln, which is like three hours northeast of London for anybody that is your international watchers, uh, yeah, many absolutely. of them. Yeah. Um, and this is, Ep we're in Epworth, which is a small village, 40 minutes drive from my house. But the significant thing is this is the birthplace of Methodism. Yeah. In this very church I'm studying right now was the home of John and Charles Wesley. 
there's a font at the back that we can maybe you can see and it's this is where John and Charles Wesley were baptized, baptized yeah, literally there yeah. um, and I love hearing the stories of John and Charles Wesley I suppose being a musician Charles Wesley a famous hymn writer over 6,000 hymns published yeah. 6,000 yeah. uh, if I've got 60 and they're not even hymns and they're not published. So John, uh, so Charles <laughs> Wesley. And, um, you know, we know him from famous hymns, like we sing them each year, Christmas carols, Heart yeah. the Herald Angels Sing. Yeah. But his brother John is a fascinating story. Of He travelled 5,000 miles a year, and that in those days is on horseback. Yeah. He preached 17, uh, 15 sermons a week. And I was thinking about this incredible birth of this movement and actually the church we're in is John and Charles Wesley's father was the rector here for 40 years. And I was thinking about being in the waiting and I was reading one of um, John Wesley's journals and it's a fascinating read and it's basically line after line, it's pretty easy to read so I managed it <laughs> and it's just went to such and such a church, kicked out, never allowed back. Went to preach here, um, was told never to come back again. And this wasn't because he was necessarily doing anything wrong. He was just a fairly radical guy that was talking about the power of God. And yeah. uh, some people didn't like that. And so it even gets to this story where he's, this is his father's church and he wasn't allowed to preach here. So we know the famous part where just to the left of me outside is Samuel Wesley's grave. And because John wasn't allowed inside, he stepped up onto the grave and started to preach from his father's grave. And the crowds flocked. And I was like, John Wesley went from disappointment to disappointment, hurt, no breakthrough, no seeming answer to prayer. And then all of a sudden he's in a field, he preaches and 5,000 people come. And I'm like, what a great example of somebody yeah. who was in the waiting. And as the bridge says, hold on, hold on, he's with you in the waiting. John Wesley kept on turning up. And when you turn up and you turn up, things start to happen. And as the final verse says, He's always with me, by my side. He's ever faithful. He's right on time. So what an honour to be in this building to record a song in the waiting, knowing the history of the hymn writers, knowing the history of the great sermons preached and a movement that impacted the world from this very place. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? It's such a, such a cool place to yeah. be. As you were talking then, I was just thinking, actually, how many of those hymns do you reckon were, made, were written on that there organ? I don't know, but it, when you kind of think of all of the stories, even Susanna Wesley, who was the husband of Samuel Wesley, there's so many incredible stories about yeah. her, known as the mother of Methodism. And I'm thinking about were John and Charles, were they well-behaved kids on the front row? Were they tearing around the place? Well, you know, all those yeah, type of things. Yeah, yeah. Um, but wow, maybe he sat in here and wrote some of those songs. Yeah, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Cool, and uh, just, I'm gonna, we're gonna wrap this up in a second, but yeah. I just thought maybe we could just talk a little bit more about, this This is a tech channel. We, yep. we normally talk about tech on this, on this channel. I thought maybe we could just talk a little bit about some of what we've done from a technical point of view in this video. Yeah. How have we kind of used some of that imagery that you've been talking about yeah. in this song? Um, like, you know, talk, talk us through some of what we've been doing with this. Great, so we, we kind of had batted a few ideas around, and I think this, the starting point for us was to look at the lyric of the song and chart out a journey. I didn't really feel it was necessarily uh, necessary to pull in all of the features of being in this building. I just wanted this to be a great home, really, that captures the song. Yeah. So we did some things where we, we kind of started, and I, I want people, this song, to be a song that fills people with hope as the song goes on. Yeah. So by the time you get to that final line, you kind of, you've lifted your head up, you've lifted your eyes up and you think there is hope. I know I'm in the waiting, but waiting time is never wasted time. And I really believe that something's gonna happen in my life. So we start off in the pews as it were. Um, and that's kind of using all of those kind of great shots that you've been using. And we basically chart our way through to where we're getting kind of up to this area here. And there's a little bit more of a modern feel and we're using different cutaway shots because I've got no other instruments to rely on. It's just myself. I'm not a dancer. Yeah. I feel awkward when I don't even have a guitar. So yeah. like this is new for me. Um, so we, we just try to chart the story of the song the best in my mood and 
I hope, I just hope, you know, people get that. Really. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think, you know, we've used a lot of creative techniques in terms of like lighting, the yeah. way we've used lighting. You can see we've got some fairly dramatic lighting here behind us. This was a little sneak preview, if you like, of one of, yeah. the, one of the lighting setups that we used for part of the video. Um, lighting, camera movement, lots yeah. of these sort of techniques yeah. um, to just build that energy and take us through that journey. So, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, Ben's done a great job. So, with, yeah, thank you for watching and engage with the video. And Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll throw some links down below to Dave's channel. You can go and check out the video, check out the song, um, go and hear more of his music. I am going to jump back over to my studio now and I'm just going to leave you with a few final thoughts on how you could go great in your own music video as well. We'll see you soon. See ya. There we go. So that was the interview that I did with Dave. There was the building and all the things that we did. But before we go, I just want to leave you with three tips on what you need to do if you're going to look at doing some kind of worship video or music video in your church building or, or another church building. So here we go, three big tips. First of all, do a shot list. The first most important thing you can do is to just work out what kinds of shots do we want to capture. The very worst thing is when you get back from doing your shoot and you discover, oh, we should have captured this shot or we should have got that angle or whatever it might be. So just think through all the different angles that you want to cover, write them down, physically make a list. I do it on my phone where I just go through and say, we want to capture this angle, we want to capture this angle, we want to capture this. And for this particular video, that's exactly how we worked it. So I started off doing a wide angled shot. We started off with the um, kind of bird's eye view, if you like, big wide angled shots of everything. And for that, you want to make sure the whole room is clear. There's no kind of mess in various places, all that sort of stuff. So tidy it all up, get that big wide angled shot. And that was the first shot on my list. And from then we wanted to go in and do some, some more medium shots and some much closer up shots. And so we just worked our way down the shot list trying to cover all the points that were listed that, that we had on our shot list, make sure we'd got all the angles, we'd got tripod shots, we'd got shoulder mounted movement shots, we'd got um, just everything. It, it was all covered and it was all listed down for us. So number one, make yourself a shot list. Number two is think about the timings for things. If you're doing a music video, it's fairly simple. You know how long the songs are that you're gonna sing probably they would already be recorded as they were in this case we had the song pre-recorded it was all uh, the actual audio was all there and ready to go we were just making a video to go along with that track so we knew exactly how long the song was going to be so if you want to do a wide angle take we knew in this case it was about five minute song so we knew that each take was going to take us five minutes so the wide angled shot would take us five minutes we probably also knew that we wanted to do two or three takes at each angle so wide angle we did it two or three times five minutes times two or three you know how long that bit's going to take you and you can you can allocate timings for all of the angles that you're going to do but make sure you include in there the time that it takes to reset cameras reset lights change out SD cards or media or whatever you're filming onto, maybe swap batteries, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you've got time included there for doing all those things that you need to do. Taking the camera off the tripod and putting it on a shoulder rig. All these things take time and make sure you allocate that time because again, you don't want to get to the end of the shooting process running out of time, not getting the footage that you need, not being able to complete the project because you haven't got those angles covered because you didn't give yourself time to do it. So think about how long it's going to take you, make sure you allocate that time to do it. And the final thing that I would leave you with is to make sure you think about the look and the feel that you want to create with this video. We spent a long time talking and preparing before we even got to site to start filming, thinking about what is this song? What is the story of this song? What is it trying to say? How does it, you know, how do the lyrics kind of move and where does it take you through this song? And then how can we reflect that in the video? We want to make sure that the video is in tune with the actual song, that the, the two aren't very different. This particular song was about a kind of a very personal struggle and about um, going from a place of, of darkness in your life 
into knowing that light through God, through that relationship with God, through things like prayer and things like that. So it was a very kind of personal journey. It was a very kind of, um, we used a lot of light and dark. That was one of the things that we did in this video. So the video itself is actually mostly in black and white because we wanted to highlight this contrast between the light and the dark in your life. So you go through dark areas um, and you go through light areas as we know through, through God, as we have that relationship with God and we can come to God in prayer and that brings light into our life. And so we used the light and dark theme through this video to kind of represent the story of this song. So think about what is this song? Is it a celebration? Is it a, um, a lament? Is it, you know, what, what sort of theme, what's going on in this song and how can we show that visually through the video? So think all those things through, think what it's going to look like, think about the story, think about how we can enhance that story through the video uh, and really plan all those things out before you get to site, before you even turn the cameras on. Make sure you've got all that stuff in your head. Once you've got that plan, you can use that to build your shot list and make sure you've got all those things covered that you need to cover. And then when you get to site, you've got your plan, you know how long it's going to take, you've got your shot list, you know what you need to capture, and you're not having to think of all those things on your feet while you're there. So do all those things, plan it out, think about what, what you want to cover, think about your shot list, make sure you've got it all written down and think about how long it's going to take you to capture it all. Don't run out of time, make sure you've got all the shots that you need and you should be good to go. So that's it, I'll leave, you, leave it there for this week and I will see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell icon and that thumbs up and I'll see you next time.